Hi, everybody. Welcome into my channel. I'm Diana. This is So In Common, and you are tuning into our Sunday video, which is our Quilt Lab video. Um, that's when we do one of our blocks or we talk about a project, and then we have different videos throughout the week that might be tips and tricks, things like that. Lots of shorts videos, but welcome in. So glad that you all could be here, and Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first Sunday of January in 2024, so I'm so glad you could be with us. Um, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to grab a Kleenex. Dave and I are pretty sure we have colds now, honestly. Um, I thought we were going to get away with not having any colds and stuff. We're vaccinated for everything. So hopefully, you know, the only thing you can't get vaccinated for, I guess, is a cold. But this week, enough of that. This week, we are talking about um, this is actually the last free block set that I promised in 2023, but over the holidays, you guys know how it gets, right? <coughs> you start doing things, the holidays are there, you, you, you get last minute invites to things and all. So I didn't get it all done, but we're doing it today. And then next week, um, I've got next week is big announcement week that is the 14th of january so you're gonna want to make sure and catch that video for sure because there's a big announcement coming um but today is all about martha's star now this one i promised you in two sizes so you're getting it in two sizes you're getting the pattern for an eight inch finished block and a 20 inch finished block. So that 20 inch, if you want to make like several in what, one, two, three, 24, 60, if you made nine of them and sewed them together, bound, uh, backing, batting, quilting, binding, you'd have a 60 by 60 quilt really easily and it'd be gorgeous. You could do them all the same. You could do them differently. You have scrappy, you could do them in all shades of one color so this that big star can be used to make up a really quick quilt it could be used to make a bed runner three or four or five of them just in a long runner would give you a nice bed runner um a big cushion a pillow cushion you could do lots of stuff with that big one and then the eight inch one is that perfect size block for a quilt because lots of quilts have blocks that are eight inches. So it's a perfect size one for using in your quilting or making a double runner of those for a table runner, anything you wanted to do with these blocks, right? So um, I have a couple of uh, video clips that we'll go through today. Um, one on choosing your fabric and um, what you can do with the four center squares, which is the modified half square triangle. We'll talk about that. And then the other one is about layout. And then in that one, I also have a tip on when you're cutting and prepping your fabric, something that I want you to get used to doing, okay? Because um, it's gonna help us throughout the year when we're doing our projects and doing our quilts and things like that. So. Lots in those two little video clips today. So um, I think, I, I, I'm pretty sure I put this in the blog this week, but if I didn't, I might have put it in yesterday's video. I can't remember. My, see, that's why I know that even though I don't like feel it in my body, there's something going on because my voice comes and goes and I'm not, I just can't think the last couple of days. And that usually tells me there's something going on, like I've got a cold or something. Sorry, guys. Anyway, I wanted, I told you guys that, you know, I don't do um, resolutions. Don't believe in them. I believe it's a way to set you yourself up for failure because we all know that to really start something as a habit, you need to do it a minimum of eight to 12 weeks. And most people, when they set resolutions at the beginning of the year, you know how long they do them? Three weeks max. So it's like, you're never going to get, it's like we set ourselves up. So I don't do resolutions, but I like to do, like, I like to take a list and go, oh, these would be fun things to try this year. Or these are things that I know I'm going to be doing this year. So I want them in my planner so I can start, you know, doing the things for them. Like my cousin and I decided to start being the two that prepared everything and sent out the invites and all for the family reunion every summer to take that off my aunt's shoulders. 
So we're going to do that. Um, and that all that that comes with that. And then um, the other thing is I'm finally going to learn how to play the guitar. I have wanted to learn how to play the guitar since I was seven years old. But you all know that I'm a lefty. And although I've tried to take lessons a couple of times, nobody has ever been willing to teach me as a lefty. Um, and I just can't play as a righty. Now, I do play the piano. I play the clarinet. You would think, but I there's something about the guitar. I can't do it as a, as a, a right-handed person. So I, I was able to get, I received a guitar that is set up for a left-handed person. I'm so thrilled. And so this coming Monday, so tomorrow, tomorrow night, I take my first lesson. I'm so very excited. I just, I went yesterday, we got my lesson book and all. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm really thrilled. And I don't want to do it for any big reason other than I love guitar. I love the sound. I love the idea of just sitting there and playing and maybe singing to myself and all. Music is big in my life. Um, it's part of what I studied in my um, graduate school stuff for um, uh, my linguist, biolinguistics uh, program. And so um, I I'm just thrilled. Tomorrow night, my first lesson. We'll see how it goes. I've got a really nice guy who's going to be my instructor at the local music store. So anyway. So that catches you up on some of that. Um, let's see. Oh, so I did last week, I showed you all the color cube. I didn't know this, but when I dug into mine a little more, they have little stickers in each one of them. One says one, one says two, so that you can put it on the boxes. So from the outside, the boxes look the same. You know what they are without taking the lid off to see like that's volume one. Without doing that, I know now that that's volume one and I have the two on the volume two one. So, and I love that. In fact, I've got some things here. We might as well talk about them. So in that video, I showed you guys this card. This is kind of a card that kind of goes with the color selection I did for Martha's Star this uh, year. The rest of these we'll talk about at the end though. So let's, let's go ahead. You're looking at Martha right there, Martha Star. So the original name for this star is actually Martha Washington Star. And the first president of the United States, Mr. George Washington, General George Washington, he gave up his, um, his military career and commission. Commissions and stuff were a little bit different than the way our military is now, but he actually resigned that commission. It was, it, it was, like I said, it was a little different. So he resigned that, became president, and his wife was named Martha. Um, and there was a star at some point made called Martha Washington's Star. But I have always just known it as Martha's Star. And that's it right there. Isn't she pretty? Another one of those really pretty stars. And do you notice there's only three segment blocks in Martha's Star, right? There's the block the solid square. There's the half square triangle, which creates your star points. And then the four that make up your center is your single modified half square triangle. And we've done those before. That pattern is also in your packet for this week. So this is your modified half square triangle. Half of it is one color. The other half are two fabrics. And um, I tell you in the film clip, how to start that block when you're doing it, which fabric to lay down first. And that info is also, <clears throat> excuse me, in your pattern information. But I wanted to tell you about it so that you would see it other than just reading it, because I know some folks are like really visual. Okay, cool. So that's the big 20 inch one. And this is my eight inch one. Isn't that pretty? So same fabrics, except, and I talk about this more in the clips, except for the star, I used a different dark blue in the two sizes only because I didn't have enough of the one. Okay. So that's the eight inch. And in there, I give you a tip. And if you saw the short video I did a couple of days ago, I've also put it out as a short. If you ever want to make a quick pinwheel, um, in a square, on point in a square, all you need are four of those um, modified half square triangles and you can make your own pinwheel like you see here, right? So it's one, one, two, three, four, okay? And when you lay them out, 
in the corners, you get that pinwheel. I'll talk about that more in the clip. But here, this little block here I wanted to show you, it is also a double pinwheel. Or it's kind of like you would see it swirling and you see it swirling down into small a smaller pinwheel. Because in this one, again, it's four modified half square triangles. But the cool part is, instead of laying it out with the dark in the corners each and every time, you lay it out with the dark half being the pinwheel. So you lay one quarter out here and then you rotate it 90 degrees and then you rotate it 90 degrees and then you rotate it 90 degrees again. And the dark part makes the big pinwheel. But if you look at it closer, the print here also makes kind of that disappearing pinwheel. Like if you're going down into it, you would see it better if I had used on that one um, fabric that was uh, this fab between these two fabrics. If I used a fabric that there was more color differentiation, you could see it even better. But it's another way to use that modified half square triangle. So I'm showing you that and we've got it in the Martha square because I want you all to see some of the things that you can do with modified half square triangles because our modified here, here's, Here's a semi big announcement. It's not the big announcement coming next week, but this is a semi big announcement. Our modified half square triangle set is coming and I'm hoping to have it done in February. I can't say what week yet. I'm honing in on a time, but I just have to make sure that everything gets done. So hopefully in February, we're gonna have another set out. Yay, okay. So in this one, you guys get all of your pieces like normal. Going forward, some patterns will be, you will need to have the basic block set one and two to make those. So if you have that, you're in good shape. If you don't, there will be a pattern for sale that will have your pieces in it, but you'll have to buy that pattern if you don't have sets one and two. So it will save you money in the long run to have your set one and two. So. Alrighty, so I pulled this card out again because um, when I talk about fabric um, in the video clip, this could be this could be a colorway that helped you. Honestly, I did not choose red, white, and blue because it was Martha Washington. No, it just happened to be that way. It seriously, it happened to be that way, but it turned out red, white, and blue. So this color card worked out really good. Okay. You'll remember that when you see it. That's our little eight inch. Isn't she? I love this eight inch one. I mean, I really love it. I'm half tempted to start making up a whole bunch of them and make a great big old Martha Star quilt. That's what I, I'm for myself. Maybe. <laughs> I never get time to make something for myself, but I love it. All right. So that's Martha Star. So we have two video clips now. One of them is... Um, picking your fabric and how to use the modified half square triangle. And then the other video clip is layout and cutting. And in that cutting, there is a tip about what to do when you get to end of the row and you have something left over. And that's the part that I want you guys get to get used to doing because it's going to make a huge difference in how you move throughout the year and how you start thinking about your build a quilt segments and all okay all right everybody so let's go ahead and go over and watch our segments then we'll come back and i have some other color cards because we have the little challenge i just gave you guys earlier in the week if you haven't seen the week the video oh oh the quilts we will quilt there's a little challenge in there okay um it's super easy super easy. You just have to send me an inspiration picture or something. So it's super simple. Um, but go check it out because you only got till the 15th of February to send in those photos to me. And you, of course, you can send those to me at support at sewingcommon.com. Okay. Um, so we'll come back and talk about that. And I have some of these other color cards I chose because I want us to pick a colorway. I want us to vote on a colorway. All right, let's go over and check out the video clip. Okay, everybody, so let's talk about our fabric choices for the Martha's Star Block. Um, and then the next little segment, 
uh, we're, we have a cutting tip and layout for you. Okay, so that's how that's going to run today. So I did not intend to choose red, white, and blue, but it just turned out that way. So because um, I told you already, Martha Washington was the first president of the United States wife, Martha Washington. Hang on, let me get rid of some. It keeps popping up there. Okay, so I did not intend to use red, white, and blue. I intended to use red and aqua and yellow, kind of almost like you see back there on the big one that we did with the log cabin. But it turned out that this red, white, and blue stuff that I had looked so pretty that I just used it. In fact, I didn't even think about the fact that it was red, white, and blue, and this was Martha's star, until after I had already cut my fabric and everything. So let's talk about Martha's star. Martha's star typically has a medium to dark background. A lot of times we do a light color in the background of a star. So that star just really blows out, but you're going to see it's going to do that anyway. So for my background color, I chose what I'm calling and what you'll see in your pattern as a medium. And I chose this. It is a white background with these gorgeous red flowers on it. So it's a floral. It's got red and white flowers, I guess. It is not, um, it is not Lori Holt. I know it kind of looks like a Lori Holt, but it is not. This is called Nana May 7, N-A-N-A-M-A-E 7, the number seven, by Henry Glass and Company. So I don't know if you can read that or not, or if it's backwards to you. But Nana May 7 by Henry Glass. Um, I just got this this last, oh, early autumn. So it's very likely that it's still available in your fabric shops if you want it. And I love it. And I'm considering this to be a medium. Because when you see my star point color, you're going to go, oh, that's medium compared to the other. So for the star points themselves, you need a dark. So for my large 20 inch one, 20 inch finished, I chose this as a dark. This is a Kimberbell basic. Remember, these don't have names. They're just part of the Kimberbell basic line. And it's, uh, I wouldn't call it a plaid, just lines, but I love it. It's really pretty. On the 20 by 20, it's going to look great. And then on my small 8 by 8 finished, I chose another Kimberbell one, and I don't think this is available anymore because this was from a very specific curated line ooh, a few years ago. So isn't that pretty, though, the little white flowers in the dark blue background? And then for the modified half square triangle, you need your dark, and then you need another medium and another light. So my second medium, I chose this one that I had. All I had of this was a half square triangle, but I had enough to do all of my five by five squares and for the larger one and all of the ones I needed for my small eight by eight finish because you don't need much of this. This is only for that part of your um, modified half square triangle. So you really don't need much of it. And then you need a light. So I chose this light. There you go. It's not so. It's a white back. This is a Kimberbell basic again. It's a white background with little red mini polka dots. And you can see how it looks in this square. Okay. And when you do this, and it says it in the pattern, but I want to repeat it here for you. When you do this modified, this is the first, your light color is the first piece you lay down each and every time, okay? Don't accidentally lay down your medium first or these two will be backwards. Always lay down your first piece as the light fabric and then you'll do this one and then you'll do your second half. It's in the instructions, but I wanted to clarify that for you verbally in here on the video as well, okay? So that's the colors. You technically, you need a medium for your background, a little bit of medium for your modified half square triangles, a dark for your background, whatever kind of dark you want to use. I'm using two different ones. The reason I'm using two different ones is I did not have enough of this to do the large one and the small one. So I chose another dark. And I will tell you, they both turned out gorgeous. 
Um, so either way. And then I chose a light and I chose a white with a little red polka dot on it because it kind of, when you look at all of these together, when you look at them all together, they just really look beautiful. And so on my small one, I actually, except for my dots, on my small one, I think I even tell you about this in the other part of the video, I ended up with all florals. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it turned out really pretty. So that's what you're going to need. And your instructions will tell you how much of each one, all that kind of stuff um, to get that made. All right, let's set that aside. Now I'm going to flip the camera because now I want to talk to you. I want to give you a tip. I've got a tip in the other one too for you. Um, the other part of the video, the next part of the clip about layout there's a cutting tip in there and something that I want you to get used to doing this year, okay? You'll see when we get to that, but let's flip over to the other camera. Here we go. So here we have my four, you make four modified half square triangles for each one of these. And these are four larger ones, the five by five finished. And I wanna show you this because if you ever want to put a smaller pinwheel in a box. You know how we talk about a diamond in a square where there's the box and then there's the diamond inside of it? Well, this is kind of a pinwheel in a square and it's so easy. You know how sometimes with pinwheels you have to kind of think out how you lay things out? But with this one, it's super easy. You're going to get a pinwheel in a square Every time when you use this modified, this two part modified, so one part is your half square triangle, one part is your modification. This is the most basic modification. And so when you put these, when you lay these out so that this solid half, the piece that looks like the traditional half square triangle, is always in the corners, the outer corners, you will automatically always get this pinwheel effect in the center. Now, if you did um, your outer color and this color the same, you would only see the one pinwheel, you'd see the white. Or if you did this one and this one the same fabric, then you'd just see a single pinwheel. But I like this better because you actually get a double pinwheel effect. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, you get that double pinwheel effect. And I love that effect. And so you could make up this. So this gives you a 10 by 10 square. This would be great in a quilt where you need some 10 by 10s. This would be perfect. You could have this as a secondary block within a quilt. Or if you want to do something summerish, make this your primary block. And because it's 10 by 10, you could put several together and make a beautiful runner. You could double it and do a two-part runner. And then that would be more of a bed skirt um, sized runner, but it would be really gorgeous. So it's really easy to end up with this double pinwheel just by using the half square um, triangle, modified half square triangle. That's the simple one, the two-part modification and the one half half square triangle. So I wanted to make sure that you saw that. And so, you know, you can do other things with this block too. Let's play around here and see what we can come up with for a second. I love just to, to play with my blocks and see what I come up with. Well, that's kind of interesting because if you added, so if you do, If you do this and you get that double pinwheel, the next time when you add them together, when you add them side to side, you're going to get these points. So you're going to get a secondary look within all of your pinwheels. That's kind of fun. I love it when you can do secondary looks with your blocks. So you can really play with this and, and figure out other things. But that's my tip for you. If you want a quick and easy pinwheel block, do one like this with these modifieds because you're getting your background and you're getting your pinwheel in the second. Very pretty, right? Yeah, I love that a lot. So let's come back over. Yeah, isn't that pretty? I love that. Now, in the next part of the video clip, uh, we're going to do layout. And I'm going to tell you how much of all of your different segments you need, all of that. And then I have a cutting 
um, as I said, tip for you. And there's part of it that I, I really am going to hammer this home, guys. Get used to doing this. Um, it takes eight weeks to make a habit, like I've said. So, you know, do this every time you cut your fabric and you're going to end up with a really cool, um, something really cool. And I'm not going to say more till we go over to the next segment. So here, let's switch over to the very next segment. Okay, everybody, here we are at uh, the cutting table. And I'm going to go over with you layout information. And then I have a cutting tip for you. And this tip is something I want you to get used to doing this year because it's going to come in handy with other projects and all that we make or other projects that you might decide that you want to make okay so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to flip the camera and we're going to talk about layout okay let's do that there we go okay so here we have our eight inch finished um, martha's a star I haven't sewn this one together yet. You'll see it sewn together um, in this video, but at this point it's not sewn together. And so the layout is pretty easy. It consists, each one of them, so whether you're doing the large one or the small one or both, you're going to have four squares. These are my large squares here, four squares. And this is going to be for me, it's my red. I'm considering it dark number one, or it could be a medium number one. However you wish to do this. This really isn't dark to me. This is more medium. As you see here, it's my star that is dark. So this is medium number one. Okay. Then you're going to have eight half square triangles, which are your medium number one and your dark. Okay, now you'll notice here in my large one, get that little piece of, oh, I had a little uh, piece of thread there. You notice that my dark here and my dark here are two different fabrics. That's okay. I still use the kind of navy bluish. I just didn't have enough of this to make a, an extra one in the small. So this, as you will see in the finished piece, turns out beautifully. So you're going to have eight half square triangles. And then you're going to have four modified HSTs. And this is the simple modified. This is just the half. And then the modification is just that triangle split in half. And you'll have that pattern in your pattern set. Now, in the modified, half of it is your dark, which is the same dark that you use in your regular HST. See, those are the same. And then in your modified, you're going to use medium number two, medium number two, and a light. So for my light, I know it's a little hard to see because it's um, the light is reflecting, but this is a little mini red polka dot. You can kind of see it down in here better. It's that little red polka dot and this really pretty lighter blue with these little roses on it and the little Swiss dots. I love that. And so that's exactly how the inside the pinwheel will look on my large one too, except the blue is going to be different. So you'll need four of those. And all of that information is in your pattern set. So I wanted to, to, to go over that with you. So I'm going to set these aside over here. Now let's talk about our layout. Super easy layout. Four corners are your four solid blocks. Then eight of your eight half square triangles are going to be making up your centers. You'll see the layout directionally and all in the, it's going to be where your medium, which is your background, is going to be what forms this pyramid shape here in all four corners or in all four sides. And then the dark creates your star points. Then we'll move into the middle, and that's going to be your four modifieds. So in this case, I think I mentioned already, your dark is going to be out here in your four corners. And then, so 
you don't have to worry about where this falls in the middle. As long as you're darker in the four corners, your pinwheel will turn out perfect. Isn't that nice that you don't have to worry about um, getting the pinwheel in the right place like we do if we're making the pinwheel alone. Um, give me just a second here. Okay, so had to pause there for a second. I had a horrible sneeze. I think I grab a Kleenex. So your pinwheels will be in the second in the center, and that's your four modified HSTs. As long as your dark is in the outer corners, your pinwheel will turn out perfect. So it's a really easy layout for the Martha's um, star. Now, with this eight-inch finish, this is the perfect size block to put in a quilt where you're going to have this is kind of a standard quilt block size, that eight-inch finished. Um, or you could do like three or four or five or six of these and make a nice like narrow table runner. And I, if you're like me, I have one um, sofa table in back and it's only 10 inches wide. So an eight inch finished um, runner for it is perfect. So a block like that could be turned into a runner easily. Okay, so that is your layout. Four modifieds eight regular HSTs, and four blocks. Pretty simple, huh? And doesn't it look pretty? I just, I really love, I love how my fabrics turned out. Um, I'm really happy with those. And to be honest, except for that little Swiss dot in the white, I've got all floral because this is a floral. This is a floral and that's a floral. I didn't intend, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, I did not intend it to be that way, but that's how it turned out and I love it. And so for my large one, I've got this floral and this floral, the Swiss dot, and then this kind of, just kind of a, it's not really a plaid, it's just kind of lines. It almost looks like a denim, like a really close up look at a denim. So I really like that. Alrighty, so that is our layout. And I'm gonna pick these up now. And I'm picking them up in order so that I can lay them right back down and sew them together. <laughs> Alrighty, so there's those. Now, I've got a great tip for you guys. Um, and this is something I want you to start doing this year because we're going to use, and this is going to help you in the long run. Um, I've got to grab one thing. Let me just grab it over here because my tray actually fits into um, the little unit that sits behind me over at the other place. All right. So I have a strip here that is five inches wide. Um, and so let's say I am making... Um, pieces that require me to start off with a five inch square. Cool. So I've got my strip here and one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to start and I'm just going to cut as many five inch squares as I need or as I can get out of the strip. There's one, one, two, three, four, five. Um, actually, I have another ruler that I'm going to use for this next piece. I'll show you. There's five. So I love this one. But for anything that is under six inches, I love this one because this is five inches right here. I place it right there on the edge of my fabric. There we go. And I cut. And so I don't have to count because I can just, I know where my line is. And on this one, you could for each one, like put a piece of tape on the line here on top so you always know where it's at. So I could take, um, let's see, I don't have any tape right there, but I could take a little piece of tape and just put it right there on that line. Just not the whole line, just a little bit. So I always know where my five inch line is, or you can look right down here at your numbers. That makes sense too, right? So out of that strip, I got three five inch squares that I need for my project. Cool, I'm gonna put that in my project pile. But, I have this little piece left over and this little piece is, oh wow, this turned out really good, three inches by five inches. This turned out, I didn't plan this guys, this turned out great. So this piece, should I cut it down into smaller pieces or is this going to help me make something else? So 
what I do is whatever is left over, I try to figure out how I should subcut it for my scrappy bin. Okay, so this is three by five. So I'm getting out my notebook that I have my half square triangles, my build a quilt sets in. And I'm gonna look, since I have a rectangle, I'm gonna look at my flying geese units, at my cut sheet to see, do I need, what's the smallest piece I can use for this rectangle? Is that a piece I can use? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm going to my cut sheet and sure enough, my three inch finished flying geese unit needs fabric one. So we'll say that would be my fabric one. Cut one, three by five inch rectangle. I swear I didn't plan that, guys. I didn't know it was going to turn out that perfect. That's really, <laughs> that was nice. But if it wasn't the perfect, say it was um, four inches by five, what I would do is I would come in and I would cut off the inch. So I'd get my three by five. And then I have a piece for a flying geese unit. Do I have a project for that flying geese unit? No, not right now. So what I do is I have a bucket or a tray. You can see mine here. Um, and then I put my units in here. Now these are bigger units for rectangles for flying geese. So this three by five, I'm gonna lay it there and I kind of lay them in piles according to their size. Those are some squares I already have done. That's a four by four square I already have done. And then I have these for other projects. So let's say we're just going to do something scrappy and we're going to make a whole bunch of flying geese. I can come in here and decide, well, let's see. I have, what's this one? This one is a three by one, two, three, four, a three by six. Is that for a four inch finish? Let me look back at my cut sheet. See, it's nice to have these cut sheets all ready to look at because then you can see what you need. Yes, so to do a four inch finish flying geese unit, I need one four by six. So these, I have more four by sixes than I have three by fives. So I could, if I'm gonna do a flying geese project, I would choose this pile. Fortunately, these all go together because these are all pieces that I cut. I had cleaned this out. This was kind of full, but I cleaned it out um, and gave a bunch of them to a friend who was just getting started. So I wanted to give her some fabric. You know how we quilters are. We like to give, you know, people who are starting out a little bit of something so they can, you know, really get into their projects. So I gave a tub of my pre-cuts away to, she's a really good friend, guys. She's not just part of I shouldn't say that. She's just a really good friend. I've known her for a long time and she wanted to start doing quilting. So um, I gave her these pieces. Anyway, um, so I would take these and I would figure out, so let's say I'm gonna do a whole pillow top. So I'm gonna need a bunch of these. So hopefully I would have a bigger stack and wouldn't have to go cutting. But what I can do is come in and take what I need out of my tray and then my pieces are cut and ready to go. And so I want you to get used to doing this every time you're pre-cutting your fabric to prep it for a project. When you're at the end of a strip, see what you can do. Maybe you don't have enough for a flying geese unit. That's okay. But maybe you have an odd size that gives you enough to do four by four squares or maybe like this. What are these? This is a six by six inch square. So apparently at the end of a couple uh, pieces when I was cutting for my Martha Star, I had enough for two six by six squares. Well, that's gonna go right in there because those can be used for lots of stuff, right? And so then I have pieces set and ready to go. All right, so that's my tip, get into the habit. That's the habit I want you to get into for 2024. I'm not going to ask you to have any resolutions or anything like that this year, but this is a habit that I want you to get used to doing because then you're going to have stuff ready to go. So when you're planning your quilts, when you're planning a project, you can see, do I already have what I need or do I need to go buy more fabric or do I just want to go buy more fabric? And if you want to go buy more fabric, for goodness sake, go buy more fabric, of course. So let's flip our camera back over. Let's take this one out. There we go. So I would have my pieces for whatever project I'm doing. And then I would have 
I had a little bit left over to put in my in my tray. And I love that. And so you saw me take these strips out. These are little strips that I can't really do anything with in the build a quilt. And then when I was cutting my pieces out of my Martha's star, when I was cutting my segments out of the um, stabilizer, I ended up with pieces this size. These are good size pieces. I want you to get yourself a little bucket, a little um, tray, like, do you see those trays? Something like that. And I want you to start putting these things in there because a project that I was going to have us do in 2023, we were never able to get around to doing it. But I want you to keep saving these kinds of pieces. For one, they're good for doing log cabin. They're good for doing um, uh, your um, oh uh, your scrappy. Oh shoot, boy, my brain is like not kicking over today. I think I've got a cold coming on or something because I can't think to save my life. Your um, strip piecing. There we go. See, give me a minute and the, it comes back to me. Um, these are also great for your strip piecing squares if you have those two patterns. If you don't have those two patterns, um, they're available over at the website. I think they're not very much. And then you can do all kinds of strip piecing and you would end up with a beautiful strip piecing quilt. That's not what we're going to use them for, but you can always use these for that kind of thing. But get used to start saving these because we're going to be using them. Oh, I wanted to show you. I don't think I showed you. See my, so many years ago when the musical Wicked came out, Dave took me, or actually I took him to see it for his birthday. I got his tickets. The tickets were going on sale like at midnight. So I stayed up. He had gone to bed. I stayed up. I know this is completely off, off key, but I've been telling you like about things you should go see. So um, I got online and bought tickets. And this is so long ago that two really good tickets, we were like in the 10th row of the theater, only cost us $279. I know you couldn't get one ticket for that these days. Um, and then I put the printout on the uh, mirror in his bathroom. I taped it there. So when he'd see, get up in the morning, he would see it. He comes in the bedroom with this thing in his hand, waving it in my face. What is this? What is this? What does this mean? I'm like, can't you read? It's too early because it was like 4.30 in the morning. I had been in bed just a few hours. And I'm like, we're going to see Wicked for your birthday. So um, my story with Wicked is if you've never read the book, you should read the book. The book is awesome. The musical is just downright stratospherically awesome. I love it. But when I was a very little girl, and some of you know that my... Um, no, I won't say it, but um, I used to have an email address or I used to have a blog that went by Green Girl, Green Girl. That's not because I'm eco-friendly or anything like that, although I do try to be eco-friendly, as friendly as I can be. We only got one world. Um, but um, when I was very little, my Aunt Patty and you've heard me talk about the ants sometimes, my mother's two younger sisters, they just mean the world to me. She made up a story about the little green girl. And I swear to you, it is the story of Wicked, part of the story of Wicked, the beginning story of Wicked. That's it. Then I find out that it could be that she and the guy who wrote the book knew each other. It was my, the green girl was my aunt's idea, but he took it off in the Oz direction. So I have a link there to Wicked. Very cool. I just love it. Um, and I, this last summer when we went to the family reunion down in Paducah, I had my aunt tell me the story and I've got her on videotape. So now I have it forever. I love it. Anyway, um, but um, this is, I have my old Wicked long sleeve t-shirt but this is the new Wicked, this fancy font, Wicked sweatshirt. And I got that at Christmas too. So I got lots of new sweatshirts this year at the holidays, which I love because you guys know I wear my sweatshirts all the time. Okay, that is the layout and that is my cutting tip. Please get in, like I said, get in the habit of taking whatever's at the end of your cutting and looking through your cut sheet to see what you can cut it down to. Okay. I think, let me look here. 
on the square and the half square triangle. I want to see like what is the smallest. Four inch square is the smallest you can use for a half square triangle um, to do a two inch finished half square triangle or square um, or quarter square. A four inch a four inch uh, square is the smallest you can use. So. If nothing else, cut yourself a bunch, you know, four inches and that sort of thing. But if you have your build a quilt sets, which I hope you do, then look at your cut sheets and that will show you how to cut, help you decide what you want to cut those down to. Okay. So if that had been four inches by eight inches, I would have cut that into two squares. And then I would have had enough to do either two half square triangles or two solid squares or whatever for two inch finish. So. It's very helpful, guys. Trust me, it's very helpful. I do that with all of my fabric. And then you saw on that, it came up where I had no waste at all. And if I had had to have cut an inch off or something, an inch wide strip, that's still big enough to put in your um, scrap container for this other um, thing that we're going to be doing this year. Okay. So, because you can see right here, like, I have pieces that are just that big and pieces that are ooh, that big and like, so there's a one by four inch strip. So you can save things that are that small for this other project. Okay. So get into that habit. All right. Enough on this one. Let's go over now and um, finish up the video. All righty. So um, I hope you got some good use out of those clips, guys, because you're going to, um, I think they're going to help you. And did you like the tip? Well, the tip about the cutting at the end, using your cut sheets to figure out and putting them in the tray, you guys, I just can't tell you how helpful that's going to be for you. Um, and not just for our videos and stuff and the things we make this year, but it's helpful for you as a quilter, as a way to organize those scraps right from the get-go so that when you want to sit down and grab your fabrics to start making things, they're ready. It's all there for you. Um, so please try to get in that habit. Eight to 12 weeks of doing it. And you'll be, <laughs> it'll be a habit. I, and I'll be honest, I don't, for myself, I try to do it every time I cut and I'm pretty good. I would say I do it 95% of the time. Sometimes if I'm in a big hurry, I just shove it off into a bin and I cut them later. And that's okay. I mean, you know, you don't always have that extra bit, but um, I would say 95% of the time, that's how I do it. So hope, hopefully that was helpful for you. Alrighty. So um, colors, if you have questions about colors, you know, you can always contact me leave your questions. If you have questions about these, leave them in the comments though, because here's the thing. When you ask your questions, trust me when I say at least five other people, if not 500 other people have that same question. So you be the brave one and put it out there. Okay. It'll be good. It'll be good. All right. But don't you love, I still, I still love the little Martha square. I love her. She's so good. We're going to do more smaller squares this year too for something. So hang on. Alrighty. So it's January, but literally before we know it, it's going to be February. And I've got, um, I've got a, a pattern plan for a little project for us um, that we're going to actually start probably the last week of January because the last Sunday in January, because I want to have a few weeks to get it done before Valentine's day. And so what I did is I went through my color cube one and I chose three cards to see what colorway you guys would like me to make these samples in. And then that gives you an idea. And I'll put this color information for you, like what colors we chose in the information when we do the project. So you'll kind of know what colors to look for. So this one, this one I thought was really pretty because it added more purpley pinks in there. Okay. And we're going to call this the orchid palette. Okay. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out a voting post. So in the community part of the 
channel. Sorry, my brain is just going. Sorry. And the community, I'll put a post there and it'll be a, a poll that you'll have to vote on. This is the orchid one. And I'll, I'll put a picture of all three of these so that you can vote. And you'll vote by the number though. I think that'll be easiest. Number 26 is the orchid palette. Now, isn't that pretty? I used to work with a guy who uh, grew orchids and um, his were never quite that pretty. I mean, his were beautiful, but that's just such a big, beautiful orchid. Lovely. And so here we've got that really light, that, so what do they call? They call this light pink. I would call this like a super duper light pink or a light lavender even. And then that's the color they're calling orchid, which I agree. And then this kind of bright pink is magenta. And then they're calling this ghost white. I would call it, yeah, ghost white pale. Um, it's almost, guys, a super light, light gray. That's what it looks like to me, to my eye. But they're calling it ghost white. And then the green, they're considering that Kelly green. I don't consider that Kelly green. I consider that like a light grass green, but that's what they're considering it. So that's the orchid palette. Okay. Now the second one we're going to call the rose palette. This is somewhat similar to this other one, a little bit, but less purple, more pink for sure. So they're calling this apple green. I would certainly call that sour apple green. Uh, this darker pink, they're calling raspberry. It's kind of bright for raspberry, but okay. Um, this one they're calling hot pink. And this one they're calling salmon pink. And I'm sorry, that's, that's nowhere near salmon colored. I, it's more of a dull bubble gum color, but that's not near salmon color. Now, remember, there are color variations on the back, but when I look at the variations, that's not salmon, but that's what they're calling it. And then this white down here, they're calling white smoke. Where this one is more gray blue, this one is more gray white, but it's definitely a white. It's more white than the other one. But this one we're calling rose, number 32. It's a beautiful palette, a beautiful palette. And then this one, we're going to call M&M's, number 33. We're going to call it M&M's. Aren't those? Don't you want to just jump in and eat them? Now, I love this palette. This is definitely reds and pinks. This says Valentine's Day to me, you know, huge. Whereas these could be more springy, but they still say Valentine's to me. But this one, so this, uh, let's start down here. This is called Rust. Yeah, it's pretty rust. It's a pretty much a rust. I love that. I would love that in a lipstick color. <laughs> and then let's see. This one here, they're calling crimson. Yeah, for sure. And they're calling this one beige. Yep, it's a beige. I had to look under my true light over here a little bit easier because my, my studio lights kind of wash it out for me. And then let's see. This one... This one, again, is the one they're calling salmon pink. It's the same color as this one. Just trust me when I tell you that's not salmon, but we'll, we'll go with it. I won't, I won't belittle the point. And then here, this one they're calling magenta. Did we have a magenta before? Yes, we have magenta in this one, too. So this one is all reddish pink colors, and that beigey color and um no um greens or anything like that in it so this one we're calling m m's number 33 i like that one this one we're calling orchid number 26 orchid really pretty purples are definitely different for valentine's day and then this one we're calling rose so i will put the post out and the numbers and the picture so that you guys can vote, okay? And which one you want. And that is the one that I, the color grouping that I'll use 
I'll, you know, I might not use all those colors. I might pick two or three of them or whatever we need for the project, but that will be the color grouping that we're going to use for the Valentine's project. Now, while we're at it, I want to show you two more just as a, just as an inspiration piece, because before you know it, we're going to be in the spring. And when we lived in Seattle, we used to live up on Whidbey Island. And when we lived on Whidbey Island, it's right next to Skagit Valley, which has the largest tulip fields in the country, second largest tulip fields outside of Holland. And they always bloom around my birthday in April. And I love going there. I've missed it so bad since we moved back to Illinois. But this one, we're just going to call it tulips. We're going to call it the Tulip Festival. I love this one. So we might be seeing colors. These are really rich, saturated colors for springtime. Uh, forest green. A little light for forest green. See, I would have called that one Kelly Green. But anyway, and magenta. They use magenta in this a lot. Uh, blood orange and purple. They're just calling that regular old purple. I agree with that. And that last one just is black, but aren't those pretty? Yep. I love that one. So we might see colors like that coming in spring. And then this one I'm calling, these are little tea roses on here. So we'll call these tea roses. So again, they're calling this salmon pink, uh, French rose, hunter green, uh, camel, and dark brown. I like that palette too for spring. That would almost be a pretty palette for Valentine's Day. Hmm, I'm thinking about this one. All right, I think I'm going to give you guys four to choose for. I know Shh, I'm bad, right? But I think that could be really pretty as Valentine's Day. So we're going to add the, we're going to add the tea rose, and then we'll have just rose, tea rose and rose, and orchid and M&Ms. Those will be the four. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Had to. Oh, guys, I thought it was going to be easy using these boxes. Like it wouldn't take me forever to decide on colors. I could have picked 50 of these cards from the one box to show you today. I'm not kidding. I'm so bad. But I mean, I'm, I love color so much that it, I get bad about like making that decision. That's why we're going to let you guys make the decision this year. So um, I figure if you see these in this color and you know you can make them in the colors you like, then, you know, that inspires us to get our projects made, right? Okay, everybody. Today was all about, though, Martha's star for our first president's wife, Martha Washington, apparently. But we're just calling it Martha's star, not Martha Washington's star. And we learned how a couple of different ways to use the um, modified half square triangle to give you a little taster for what's coming with the modified half square triangles. And you're going to get two sizes. You're going to get the eight inch finished and the 20 inch finished. Look at the difference between those. You guys will make so much with them. I know you will. All right. So you can go to our website and get your free pattern pack right now. It's available to you. Of course, you can always put your pictures up on show. Uh, nope, that's YouTube, not Facebook. Sorry, wrong one. There we go. You can put your pictures up on Facebook. Guys, I really want to see your pictures this year. Um, don't be nervous. Whether you made you feel like you made a mistake with something, whatever, don't be nervous. Put them out there. I want to see them um, because I know they're beautiful and we're always hard on ourselves. So put them out there, guys. I really want to see them. And as always, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, would you please click that subscribe button? We'd love to have you as part of the Sew in Common family. We're growing by huge leaps and huge bounds. And I'm so thrilled to have all of you um, join me for our Build a Quilt uh, system that I created where we create our uh, blocks and our quilts and our quilt projects in the hoop of our embroidery machine. All righty, everybody. Until next week, um, go back and watch some of the stuff I put out this week. I'll link some things at the end for you again that I think that if you haven't seen them yet, you'll want to check out. And until next time, as always, like and share, please, the videos. I appreciate that. No end. And of course, go so life beautiful. Bye, everybody. Till next time.